Let's continue with another example of a measure. As I did last video, a small recap, we have x, any set, and m, a sigma algebra, and we define this function mu that grabs elements in our sigma algebra, and for each of those, it will give them one number between zero and infinity. And we say that this function mu is a measure if it satisfies these two properties. First one is the measure of the empty set is zero. And the second one is that whenever we grab a sequence of disjoint sets in the sigma algebra, then the measure of the union is the sum of the measures. Let's work with another example that's a bit more complicated. Now we will have just any set X that's gonna be non-countable and we will work with a very specific sigma algebra. It's one that if you've seen our videos, then you already know how to work with. Now, if you haven't, then I super recommend you go and check about the sigma algebra. Is the countable or co-countable set sigma algebra? And it is defined as all the sets E subsets of X for which E is countable or each complement is countable. A few videos ago, we proved that this set is a sigma algebra. Again, if you haven't, I recommend you go and check that video out first. It's very short, so you don't waste a lot of time. And now we define the measure. How do we do that? Well, for any set E in our sigma algebra, we will define mu of E as one or zero. It will be one if E complement is countable and it will be zero if E is countable. So basically what this mu does, it's giving it some weight, the weight one to non-countable sets because if E complement is countable, then E is uncountable and it's giving E measure one. So it's really measuring those objects that are uncountable. Let's check the properties and find out if this function mu is a measure or not. The first one is the most simple one, the empty set. We have to study mu of the empty set. Well, the empty set is countable. It has no element, so it's trivially countable. Then it falls into the second category. E is countable. The empty set is countable. And then mu of the empty set has to be zero. And now it comes the most complicated part in this proof. The second one. To prove the second one, as always, we grab a sequence of disjoint sets in our sigma algebra. This is a sequence in our sigma algebra. And our sigma algebra had elements that were countable or with complement countable. So each of these E sub j will either be countable or will have a complement countable. So let's start with a few cases. The first case is well, what happens if all of these E sub j's are countable? Well, then the union of countable sets is countable. So what this first statement is telling us is that the measure of E sub j is zero because it's countable. And this happens for every j. And this second statement is telling us that the measure of the union, because the union is countable, is also zero. So then I can just add all the measures of E sub j, and as they are all zero, it'll give me zero. Then we get that the measure of the union is actually the sum of the measures because all this is equal to zero. So that was the easy case. Now, what would happen if that wasn't the case? Now, because 
the sequence is disjoint, then if i, a subindex, is different to another subindex j, because they're disjoint, what we will have is that e sub j is a subset of e sub i complement. And also, e sub i is a subset of e sub j complement. So what this is telling us is that there can only be one index for which the complement of e sub i0 is countable. Because if there was another one, then it would be included and then it would have to be non-countable. And that's an absurd. So there can only be one element in our sequence with countable complement. And then what this is telling us is that any other e sub j for j different from this i0 we found is countable. And so when we calculate mu of the union over all the elements, this union we can just split it into two. We have the union over all the ones that are different from this i sub zero and then just add e sub i zero. But now we have that this union, because all of these are countable, this is a countable union. And then the e sub i zero, its complement is countable, so this one is uncountable. So we have the union of something that's countable with something that's uncountable. The result will be something that's uncountable. And so because we're calculating mu of something that's not countable, mu values 1. Now what about the sum? Again, the sum from j equals 1 to infinity of the measure of these sets, we can just again split it. We're gonna first add all those that are countable, so all that are different from i0, and then add the i0. And because all these e sub j's are countable, then the measure is 0. And we're adding 0 plus 0 plus 0 infinitely many times. This first term will give us 0. But e sub i0 have countable complement, and so it is uncountable. So mu of an uncountable set will give us 1. So we have 0 from this set and 1 here. 0 plus 1 is 1, and so we have that mu of the union is equal to the sum of the mu's. Mu of the union is equal to the sum of the mu's. And this is the second property we wanted to prove. So we were able to prove both properties in the definition of a measure. So we can conclude that this function is a measure.